Sony products have an allure that other phones just really can't match. It's almost primal, like the phone is calling to you. So this is another refinement in the continual process that Sony is seeming to take, but this is easily the best device they've ever created. The design is a refinement from its predecessor, but for the better. We still have the front and rear glass panels, but the back is now frosted, which looks stunning and feels much nicer. This is surrounded by a metal band with plastic edges to help absorb potential shocks. This thing is extremely slippery, so something like a skin will be necessary. What's cool about this phone is that it seems to be made for one, because you know, some phones just don't really work particularly well. The second biggest change is the fingerprint sensor. I'll get straight to the point, it works really well and the location fits my personal use perfectly. Everyone seems to have their own inclination of preference, but with the double tap to wake and the ability to register multiple fingers, this is a great and natural position. If you've ever used a Sony device before, then you'll feel right at home. There are no drastic changes. This is the standard Z5, if you will, so the screen is the same 5.2 IPS LCD 1080p panel found on the Z3 Plus. It's a great panel with some nice touches, such as the ability to adjust white balance and the addition of Sony's X Reality Engine, which enhances contrast, reduces noise, and fine tunes saturation. Overall, the device is small for my liking, but I know that this size is perfect for a lot of people. Due to the square body, the feeling in the hand could be better, but man, I tell you, does it look nice. I've always loved Sony's design language and this encapsulates it perfectly. This translates to the hardware too. It's running the Snapdragon 810, which let's be honest, totally ruined the Z3 Plus. Safe to say that this time around, we're good. It does get warmer than most of the phones I've used, but it's nowhere near as bad as the Z3 Plus. Finally. Everything else is top notch. Three gigs of RAM means this phone flies without a hitch and having expandable storage up to 200 gigs means I can fill this thing with a crap load of music and files. I'm one happy boy. And that experience continues. You may know that I listen to a lot of music and one of my main gripes in general is the lack of focus on audio from major OEMs. Sony is definitely one of the better ones here and that is down to the support for high res audio. I load up some DSD or flat files and with compatible headphones, you should be in for an awesome experience. If not, there are a multitude of options to tweak and tailor the sound for your ears and your headphones. Another showstopper this year is the damn camera. This one's easy, it's awesome. I hated the Z3 Plus camera, but this is entirely different. The 23 megapixel sensor is capable of obtaining some pretty incredible images. The depth of field is strong with near field objects, which is kind of crazy when you realize it's from a phone. Detail is good, however, I don't see the point of a 23 megapixel output at that resolution, the camera just doesn't have the quality to justify the size. The software comes with a whole host of modes, but if you want to get the most out of it, put it into manual mode and have at it. The options aren't so deep, so I would love to see this improved. Where the camera shines though is low light. Sure, there is some noise, but I can take a little noise if that means I can capture these sorts of images. With a phone, Guys, listen, you won't be disappointed. The icing on the cake with all of this is the dedicated button for the camera. Perfect. Video is just as good, especially Sony's implementation of software IS dubbed uh, SteadyShot. It just works incredibly well. I'm walking here, holding it in my hand, not even trying. You'll be running this on Android with Sony skin on top, but you knew that already, didn't you? But for those who don't, well, Sony's implementation is one of the better out there. It's light and comes with some uh, nice touches that I like. For instance, the auto sign into open Wi-Fi networks, automatic action, so when you plug in your headphones, volume is set and the app is launched. And it has tight integration with PlayStation, so if you have a PS4, then you have the ability to remote play straight into the device. You can even hook your DualShock 4 up to enhance the playability. This is one of the best features of the Xperia line, and this great addition remains on the Z5. We've got a 2900 milliamp battery, which is not bad considering the phone's size. On average, I was able to get through a full day with about three and a half hours of screen on time. This was at mid brightness, mainly browsing, push emails, watching YouTube and social media and all that kind of good stuff. My runtime has been acceptable, although it's not enough in all honesty. You can get more runtime by using various battery saving modes. These work by whitelisting apps whilst disabling others when the screen is off. There's even an ultra stamina mode for those desperate situations. I love Sony, I won't lie. I think they do some pretty great stuff, but they continually falter with some stupid decisions and silly implementations, which really, what's the word? Ruins this overall perception that they're aiming to create. This phone isn't perfect, but damn, I tell you, it's a good effort. 
One of the biggest USPs is the ingress protection rating of 68, which I love. This means that it's particle and waterproof, but once again, no salt water. I think the extra inclusions such as the oleophobic coating, the FM radio, the barometer sensor, AptX, H265, and Ampla support overall make this a very well-rounded phone. So that's it from me, guys. Let me know what you think down below. And a big, big thank you to Clove Technology who lent this phone to me. And now I tell you, I kind of don't want to give it back. This thing has been flirting with me since the start. Anyways, take it easy. I'll see you soon.